What is up guys, it's Team Boomerangs here, and like I promised you guys, I am doing the Ezo deck profile. Fabio, nigga. Fabio, guys. And I got the mat. This mat's my gold powder mat. Base is Duke, Mega Man's Percival to Glare, and of course, we know who Ezo is. Blues. Come on, man. You forgot Zero. What the hell? We don't have Zero yet. We have a unit to be Zero, but one day, one day, the mat will come soon. Do the deck profile. Alright guys. Starter is, the starter came out in set 14. Um, Scarlet Lion Club. Karia. Karia. Her skill is this: when she boosts an Ezo, put into your and it hits, put into your soul. Take the top two cards, and if they're gold powder units, call them as rested. What I like about it is that one, it builds soul for his skill, and not only that, it gives you two free units. You might hit triggers, but it's gold powder. Like it's old gold powder. You should, if you're playing gold powder, you should already be used to top calling certain triggers. But I play certain triggers that you don't mind. When a new stand trigger comes out, it's gonna fix that problem. Why not something like Spring Breeze or Crift? I was thinking about Spring Breeze, but I didn't want to waste a counter blast. What I like about her is that she's pretty free. Um, I could do the ride <coughs> chain. Um, but, um, I mean the superior ride, but at this moment I'm not a, a huge fan because I don't want to play 8k vanilla. Like my grade one lineup is pretty tight, and once G3 comes out, my G, my grade two and my grade ones are gonna be different. But this is something that you can play like in the meantime. But uh, let's get off with the grade threes. I'm playing four of the probably the best Ezel, which is Salvation Ezel. The one came on set 14. If you don't know what he does, limit break scale, counter blast two, soul blast two. Um, if you have a full, if you have a full um, board with gold powder, he gains 10k and a crit. Don't forget, he unlocks all your fields, so he's he a great matchup against Link Joker. Except for Messiah. Well, <clears throat> once the new Messiah comes out, other than Messiah's, like he's like whatever. But he helps against Glendios. He helps like it's just really good. And he actually won me a few tournaments back in the day. Back when um, Set 14 first came out, I was playing him at two, and I fought Link Joker at my final round. Then like at top four, and then he's like, oh. Beat Link Joker for you, because he forced perfect guards when they triangle lock me. Um, his other and then at the very end of the turn, he unflips the damage and soul charge one. So pretty much, you counter blast one, you soul blast one for his skill. If you think about it, and the only thing I wish that he was is that he was a cross ride, but he'll be too good if he was a cross ride. Well, he also has the former Ezo skill, which is you get plus one for each gold pattern on the field. Too. Yeah, he does, which it really does <clears> help <throat> to pump him up for bigger numbers because if you still have um, this as a booster, he swings for 31, so he's already swinging for, le um, for stride numbers and legion numbers. I played two of the original Ezo, in um, incandescent line blood Ezo. Um, limit break is counter blast two. Um, look at the top card of your deck. If it's a gold powder, call it. This unit gains power equal to that unit's power. So say you call a grade two, you gain 9k power. It's pretty good. Um, if you have the D limiter out, so you can do it early. Nice little rush right there. Um, he's mostly there just because he has Ezo in his name. And for my other card that I play at two, I play Platinum Ezo at two, mostly because. Um, being cross range is not bad, and I play a certain card that helps me get my grade threes. I might bump up the card to four, but we'll see how that that plays out. I'm playing um, two platinum Ezels. Um, it's sadly it's um, it's uh, what's it, um, limit break five, which is um, ultimate, ultimate break, break. Ultimate break. It skill is this: counter blast three, and your whole board gains five k power. It combos really great when if you play the soul blast two on flip two. So if you have Four, say you have four open counter blasts. Counter blast three, pump them all up. Call this little bad boy behind, um, bad boy behind your vanguard. Unflip two damage. Do it again. So your two rear guards on the side gained each, each rear guard gained 10k. So pretty much, if it's 19, that that unit right there is swinging for 39. If you play stand triggers. That's pretty devastating for your opponent. But it's, he's really he's really good as a as um as a finisher and being cross ring really helps the guard against rear guards. It's nice to be that defense. You can, you know, play more of these, play more of these, and play less of these. It's all up to your play style. I just like seeing this guy a little bit more because he's more alive, but he's eleven. And him at two, I see him enough at two, surprisingly. I don't know why he he likes my hand too much. Um, great two, my great two is a little bit all over the place, but I play right now three of Degamus. He's the 12 hit tiger when you have an Ezel as your vanguard. I play all Ezels. Um, once G3 comes out, I might be taking him out for the Amber clone because honestly, 12 hit tigers aren't really that useful anymore. And the Amber clone kind of does like, it gives me more rear guards. 
I play this guy. He came on set 14. His skill is just when you ride an Ezel, if he's already on field, count kind of blast one top call card. He's really good. Just to give me an extra card, like on the, on the field, and just for one count of blast, I get a free unit. It's not that bad. I play him at three. Um, don't know if I'm gonna keep him or not, but he's really good. Um, the card that I might bump up to four. He came out in set 15. It's a Liberator, uh, Liberator Marin. The best thing about this card is that you don't need a Liberator Vanguard. As long as he's top called, check the top five cards, and add a grade two to your hand. Um, when the Amber Clone comes out, I'm, I'm going to be bumping up her up to four because I want to keep drawing more grade threes. More grade threes to stride, pits for perfect guards. Um, not only that, in case I'm playing Mega Colony, I want to see my grade threes into my hand. And better yet, if I have so many grade threes, and say I'm on on this Ezel, I'll just ride Platinum Ezel and then stride. Next, then that way at the end of my turn I'll be crossing. It really does help for those plays. And when you and she's not that and she's not that hard to top call anymore. Finally, this guy I might be bumping up to higher numbers because he's really good. Um, when he's he's AK, but with the new Ezel stride, he won't be AK. And then he'll be intercept fodder. His skill is when this unit's top called from your from your deck, soul charge one, on flip one damage. I like the fact that he soul charges, so I can be able to use the soul blast two on flip two more often, and to use um, pla um, salvation as well more often. That's the reason why I play him, and unflipping damage always helps. Great ones, I'm playing the original uh, Mark as perfect guards. Um, if you plan on playing Gurgit, I recommend picking these up because. Um, the, all the new perfect guards say that they have to be called to guarding sticker from your hand. These don't. So if you want to get that superior guard against, you know, um, all the glory melting tools coming out, he really helps. I play four D limiters because I don't mind getting beat up early game. My opponent plays a grade two game. That's fine. If I if I just stay at three damage, I can just swing at them with a crit for large numbers or get a field. No matter what, I don't mind. D limiter helps. This is a little hidden gem a lot of people don't know about. It's a Liberator from set 16. I don't know why a lot of people are not running this. It's really good. Um, it's skill is this. When this unit boosts um, a gold powder and if it hits, kind of blast one. Put this into your soul, take the top three, call a unit. And so you build soul, you get another attack. So you can get potential four to five attacks. I really like this card. It's a lot of people don't see it coming because most people in this world they don't read, they don't bother the, to read a card. Um, gold pattern players, I recommend picking up these cards. They're gonna be really good for Gurgit. This came out in set 16. Then I play two of the Soul Blast two and flip two for Gold Pattern. Came out in set 14. Really good card. I build enough soul with the cards that I'm playing right now. I want to be able to Salvation Ezo as many times as I can. And when um, Crossbreed Dragon comes out. It helps for those for those plays. Not only that, but your deck is very counter blast heavy, so having that is an extra boost to get Mithril Ezra off if you need the extra part, the yep. counter blast for it. It does, and you don't want to take out too much damage. Right now, I'm not playing stands at this moment. I will be playing the stands once um, G3 comes out, but the moment I'm playing the um, eight, standard eight crits or draws, this is the draw trigger. That's a promo. I mean, no, it's not a promo. It came on the extra booster. Um, when this unit's top called, it's like two units, give them 2k power. It's nice, it's a really good draw trigger. I one love unit, this draw. Not two. One unit, oh, One? One unit? My yeah. bad. I read it wrong. But it's, it's nice in case you have some really bad columns, and then it's whatever. It gets, he's, he's great with uh, Bagdemagus, because you superior call him, you can give the other lane power to make it a proper lane, and then you still have a 16k lane because you got 12 and And if and they're four. still at grade two, and you give them to Bagdemagus, it makes them, um, he's 16, it makes them 18. 18 or another column or if he's not behind Bidegamus it makes them 14 so if they're at grade 2 and, you, and you're on Ezel and Bidegamus is on the rear guard circle that's 14 that's a 10k shoot right there from your hand yep. so he's a really good draw trigger um, I play 4 flame of victories I play them mostly because to build soul that is it like and not only that you don't special count by so it doesn't yeah. really matter soul charge plus 3k to a unit um, 8 crits I will be swapping this crit for the new lion crit it's hilarious, but it's Ezel. He is a lion. Why aren't you playing the new lion crit trigger plus these guys? That's what I. That's my personal take. These crits I would be playing in in Duke. But that's another deck for another time, guys. And then finally, four heels. Don't play the old heel trigger. That's a guy. That's my thing right there. She's pretty. All right, strides. 
Right now I'm playing you have you the standard four mithril ezel. Why? Because he flipped a copy of himself face up. His skill is this. <clears throat> when you stride over an ezel, count blast one, flip a copy of himself face up, check the top five, um, unlock your whole field, take the top five, and call a unit. Not only that, that unit gains power equal to its original power. And this and Ezel gains power equal to that unit. So say we top call this this little this little lady over here. She gains 9k power. So now she's 18. He's 26 by himself, plus 9. Numbers, people. Numbers. Really good. And the fact that he just an auto win against Link Joker, even better. That's just rub more stall in the wound. But once some um, Crossbeard Dragon comes out, you do him twice. When you Crossbeard Dragon. Pretty much now you have five pieces of cards in your G zone. So when you can blast two, in case you're playing against Rawlers, Kagero, Narakami, um, Gear Chronicle, and they wiped out your whole board, well, I can get on my, my whole. I can get a whole field for free. That's a cause of counter blast two. It, yeah, you might see triggers, but it says call up to as many as you want, equal to the number of cards you have face up in your G zone. So that helps. Uh, I would recommend if you're playing it right now four Campbells, but I don't have four Campbells. I have three Campbells. Uh, Campbell, what it does is when this unit hits, just like uh, a Blade. Um, well, they're not not like a blade, but you know what I'm saying. Um, take the top five cards of your deck when he hits. Just go powder and call it. He helps a really good. He's really good with Pelinor. Like I was considering making a hybrid deck with this with Pelinor, but I'll probably wait until like G3, uh, G3 when that comes out. But um, Campbell, really good stride. And not only that, the unit that you top call gains 2k power. So if you call a grade two, I can now hit the Vanguard. I'm 11k. They didn't hit a trigger. Campbell, probably one of the good strides that came out for Gold Paladins, and the fact that it's top five is even better. And then finally, one Blizzard, because why not? If you keep using Mithril Ezel, um, if you use Mithril Ezel twice, and then you finally go into um, Blizzard, you know they don't have a perfect guard. He gains 5k, he gained 25k from this. That's pretty good right there from one Cannon Blast. So he's, he's always a good finisher. But alright, guys, let's see movements right here, and we're gonna be signing off. Thank you guys.